everybody. I think this is Dr. Subodh Kandamuthan. I'm a professor and director of the Center for Healthcare Management at Administrative Staff College of India. Uh, ASCII works very closely with uh, different state departments, government. I think we have been part of the Ayushman Bharat program of the government of India. Uh, we have also been helping the Telangana government in many health initiatives. So we are doing self introductions. By the time you come back in full steam, we'll do a self introduction. Yeah, so I think we also have a full-time hospital management program. So ASCII does uh, research, consulting, trainings, capacity building in the area of health sector, not just in the country, but also outside country. We work with Africa, we work with Europe, different countries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Subodh. Uh, Shekhar Agarwal, sir. Uh, Shekhar Agarwal, I'm the part of the uh, FP CCI team. And uh, more to learn, and this is very important uh, subject what you have taken and very relevant. And my only submission that till the this thing subsides or the things come down, you know, the, our group must continue. Thank we you. must continue our effort. Yeah. Yeah. Inani sir. Uh, I am Ramakant Inani, Senior Vice President, Federation of Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Thank you. And Kyati. Uh, hello, good morning everyone. I am Khyati Naravne. I am the CEO at the Federation of Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Uh, President Jasti is, uh, you know, stuck somewhere, so he'll be joining very soon. Uh, no problem. Dr. Guruvaradi, I'm not going to ask you to introduce yourself. The meeting is... Right. But then, but then, I you can finish it. So, Come on. Guruvaradi, if you walk into his room, you look for your knees. If your knees are okay, you'll have operate on your bones. Others are not part of the body. So don't go near him. Guruva is a phenomenal speaker. He is in every single uh, oh, yeah. poet. Is a poet. He writes poetry. He is a phenomenal surgeon. I think one of the world record holders in number of surgeries. And also my personal friend, uh, Guruva. Thank you, Guruva. Very briefly about yourself. Yeah, but, uh, he, being friend to Murli is the most uh, coveted qualification of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go a long way. We are friends in CEO club. We belong to the same uh, subgroup into that. We enjoyed a lot of moments together. And uh, I got another connection. My brother is also from IAM uh, Ahmedabad alumni. So Murli was his senior. So I can see the same uh, intellectual arrogance when bo both of the people. <laughs> so he's like... <laughs> <laughs> but I want to pull your legs. No, 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 no. <laughs> like that. Well, you know, Guru Arendi, Guru Arendi, you know, the first time I went to his, uh, you know, clinic, uh, he put uh, me into ease within a few minutes. As uh, Murli said, you know, he look at his, your knees and then tell you wonderful things that put you at ease completely. <laughs> but I am expecting uh, this doctor today who you know will strengthen our knees to ensure <laughs> that you know we are no longer weak in this COVID issue. You know, yeah, no, all of us are now no, suffering sir, from sir, weakness. Sir, you, you, you are weak at the knees only when you see a beautiful lady when you are teenage. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time when you go weak at the knees. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Khyati, I'm sorry about uh, these sort of remarks, but I think you should. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm glad you made my day. <laughs> <laughs> right, Murli. Okay, now right. ganging up, ganging up. It will be noted. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry to uh, button, but uh, I think. Yeah, Jeram, you can start off. Solved. You can start off. We are waiting for you to come yeah. back. We'll finish our introduction. Over to you. Yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, the idea of having this webinar was to go into the situation, uh, COVID situation now in the country and uh, you know, give it a perspective and uh, you know, uh, what we are fed every day is about uh, the situation in the country. Uh, I, before we get into the re real debate, I would just like to give you a brief outline of what we will be discussing. Uh, each one of you can contribute your uh, ideas and what you feel about it. From the time uh, coronavirus started in uh, Wuhan last year, uh, the way it has spread to various countries, it has been very rapid, unprecedented in uh, virus travel, as you all know. And uh, from the first case in India, uh, in Kerala on January 30th, to where we are now, uh, with positive cases uh, uh, 
closing in on 18,000, uh, oh, sorry, 6 lakhs and uh, the uh, mortality rate going up to uh, 17,500. I think that is the figure as of today. Uh, COVID has been the focus of uh, discussion, debates, you know, whether it is among the people, in the media, among the, in, the, in governments. Subsequently, we had the lockdown, which was implemented on uh, March 25th. It went through various uh, stages. And now we are into unlock. Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we are in unlock two now. And uh, these guide, the guidelines have been given by the government of India. One of the things that happened when, uh, when COVID emerged was uh, most people in our country particularly were not even aware of what is the hand sanitizer. Uh, they had absolutely no idea except for a small percentage of the population who were used to, you know, probably maintaining hygiene when going to a restaurant or something like that. But today if you see hand sanitizer, masks, these have all become uh, household items and they are a must in the shopping list when you uh, shop. What has happened is the, the starting from the lockdown, then the unlock, there have been changes in the guidelines. All these have evolved into what we have now come to believe is the new normal, which is a way of life that most people are yet to understand. They are confused a lot. I mean, they really don't know much about what exactly is happening, what is the situation. The basic problem is that the government, during the initial phases of the lockdown, they kept on saying that coronavirus virus is a deadly killer. That anyone who contracts it would probably not survive. Particularly those with the comorbidities. Now, uh, in the initial stages, everyone was asked to stay indoors, uh, not to meet friends, not meet families, keep away from gatherings, and so on and so forth. During that time, the entire focus was on life over livelihood. That, that was the basic concept. When, when the government kept saying, Prime Minister said, chief, several Chief Ministers said the same thing, that it is a question of life over livelihood, so we can always get back the economy on rails, but uh, human lives are more important, so we should focus on containing the virus and going for a total lockdown. Subsequently, all those things have changed. And now economic activity has become paramount. And uh, the government now tells the people that they should not get overly worried about coronavirus. They should learn to live with it. It is here to stay. So, I mean, you, you, on the, earlier you were told that the moment you get some symptoms, rush to a hospital, get tested, isolate yourself. And now they say that people need not go to hospitals if they have mild symptoms. And only the serious cases need the hospitalization. These perceptions are constantly changing over the days. And this is where the confusion for the people begins. So, is it a dangerous disease? Should people go to work? Can they travel? These are all the questions that are there in people's mind and there are actually really no answers for uh, these things. So I feel that to set the uh, debate rolling, uh, give a perspective on exactly what the situation is in the country. Uh, you know, we see that politicians very often they say, you know, if it comes to the states, they say we are doing better than the national average. When it comes to the country, the government says we are doing better than what the world, I mean, countries across the world, we are far better off. What I would like to know is do these figures of positive cases or mortality rate, do they really have a story to tell? Uh, Murli, I would like to begin with you. Can you give us a perspective on exactly what is the situation? Thank you, Jaram. I'm going to project something for you to put. I put some data together.
give me a minute. I'm just trying to get this. Sure, sure, sure. Go, ahead. go ahead. No problem. Give me a minute. Can you see what I'm see the screen? Some screen? Uh, you are searching something, sir. Yeah. You come from COVID analytics misadventure. Can you see this? Uh, not yet. It's not yet on the screen. It's great. Shall I, Yes, sir. Send this to you. Just see if you can show this because I think it's having some time time lag here. Okay. You are sharing it with me. Yeah, I'm mailing it to you. Okay. Sometimes the share screen doesn't show. Patience is another thing we have to learn. Only. Yeah, <laughs> learning, learning, learning. I agree with you. I haven't figured out what the hell is going on. I'm supposed uh, to. Sir, so stop the screen because uh, your uh, screen shows a small window. Yeah, okay. So you have already screen. shared with me? Yeah, I'm just sending it to you, the mail. Meanwhile, I'll try once more. I just sent it. Meanwhile, I start talking. By the time you can do the context for setting. Yes, that would be good. Yeah. Uh, Jaram, I think yeah. for the benefit of everybody, I think I'll bring it down to uh, everybody's mind. Why are we doing this? What is the purpose of engaging for, for FIKI or uh, people like uh, uh, FIKI or uh, FTCCI or Dr. Gurwaradi coming up stage and talking to you? Mm -hmm. Why are we engaging with the media? I think that my biggest complaint has been in the last, uh, I've been researching on this COVID problem for a long time. As you know, Fiki has also been in the forefront of analyzing the impact of COVID and impact of it on the economy and also on public at large. One of the most important narrative has been governed by what the media writes, which in turn is governed by, to some extent, what the government says. But a combination of these two, as you said earlier, has created a very high level of fear psychosis in yes. public. And consequently, we are losing, if you look at the data, we are about... Uh, uh, according to some estimate, anywhere between 18,000 crores per day in 30,000 crores per day, the cost of lockdown in India as a whole. It is anywhere between this number is the cost of a lockdown nationally. But individually at the state level, Telangana may be 8% or 10% of the national level of cost. You can take somewhere around 8%. So lockdown is very expensive because, and it affects the bottom of the pyramid more than the rich people like you and me because we have enough savings to survive us. Uh, the 18,000 crores I talked about is directly impacting people who are household income, which are very ordinary people who are street vendors. Their wages and their earning, daily earnings together is about 18,000 crores. It is in this context, we need to understand COVID as a, as a, as a Mahamari, as a, our Prime Minister called it. What the Prime Minister did was, in the beginning, was to sensitize all of us to take some precautions. But I think somewhere down the line, we all got carried away with that narrative and it became a huge lockdown and now we are in the stage of restart. Then I asked myself the question, how serious is COVID? Because there is one measure or one data given by WHO uh, at the ICMR India level releases some data. And after doing some analysis, I've come to the conclusion, the key to understanding COVID is to understand how the data is presented to us. The way data is presented to us determines the way we understand the seriousness of the disease and therefore the way in which we react to the corrective action to manage this. Uh, that is what I'm going to show you two examples. Uh, Shalaja, have you got it? Shalaja? Got it, sir. I'm opening the file. Give me a minute. Yeah, opening the file, yeah. So what I'm going to show you two examples of how you look at the data. The same data I'm going to show you in different ways. And by looking at the data differently, you'll understand how our mind can oscillate between extreme worry and to a large amount of comfort with the way the, the disease is progressing. Right? 
my challenge and i am being very candid about it i think dr guru also may not uh, agree with me fully statistics is not about knowing some numbers it's all about taking the right ratios it's presenting the right ratios in the right context if you don't do this in the right, right ratio in the right context the same number looks very different for two scenarios right challenge over to you sharing the screen sir yeah yeah Yes, yes. Uh, we've got it now. Yeah, yeah. So put it on display mode. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it very with a lot of responsibility, and I'm open to debate on this. I'm calling it the misadventure. I think the whole COVID analytics presentation by the whole country, right from uh, to some extent ICMR and all of us put together have contributed to this. It's a misadventure. Next slide, and let's put some few examples. And this is the opening of the debate. I am giving two samples of media coverage which happened yesterday and today. one is from g news and one is from hindu hindu is supposed to be very uh, very very sober in the reporting look at the data of uh, g news as of that of july that uh, june uh, july uh, 2nd or 30th of june 2nd july it, the death count surges by surges keep look at the word words are very important in the way we understand death count surges by 1928053 in maharashtra Maharashtra COVID cases rise to 180,000 something. India records 585,000, which means half a million cases of coronavirus infection. And the important thing that is missed out is that, and this is very important. I want you to understand. We have only 2.2 active cases, 2.2 lakh active cases, and 3.5 lakh people have recovered. Now let me give you an example of understanding. When a country's population, when we measure, there is an existing population. Some people are born and some people die. The net growth in population is actually a net of in the growth in uh, birth minus how many people die add to the population. So when you look at India, for example, our concern is if the total population of India is going up or number of births which is going up. In this case, increase in coronavirus infection is equal to number of births in the country. and the total net pop net growth or net amount of cases is the population growth so when we talk about india we always talk about population we are not focusing on number of births right now what has happened here our net population is declining 5 1/2 5.85 million minus 2.2 is 3.5 3.5 million cases or 3.5 lakh has gone off the radar we have only 2.2 million cases 2.2 lakh cases nobody is talking about the net cases they are talking about the gross cases this is the fundamental error because your mind is looking at 5.85 lakhs or 2.2 lakhs is a case because your infection increase for example once the people recover the probability of their distributing the disease to somebody else doesn't exist when you recover you also recover your capacity you will not going to be a person infect you are not going to infect others so our risk of infection is coming from 2.2 lakh people but we are focusing on 5.85 the second one the hindu which is a very proper publication highest single day jump what does it mean 507 deaths and also majority of the cases close to 4 lakh in, in june it made the worst month of the country now look at the way they projected it. for example single day jump highest when a base number is high when your percentage is taken out of the base number like for example indian economy grows every day by a single day highest jump in indian economy growth now what does it mean our economy size is going up same percentage number will go up so the focus is not on the percentage the focus is on the number of number of cases so i am personally project to you and i want this to be debated later on i am going to show you three more case three more slides and then we'll throw it open so my first submission to you the media is focusing on the wrong index wrong indices wrong data okay next slide this is the common narrative now on your what you have seen in the graph is the dates are on the x axis and the y axis is the number of cases look at the graph it is an upward moving graph 
anybody there's a parabola in, uh, in, North, in our language we'll call it a parabola parabola means it's a the slope of the curve is going up and up and up it's going towards the vertical so anybody looks at this curve oh my god what's happening india's very cases are going up it's a scary scenario because it's upward trending graph but this is not the right data because it cumulate number of cases vis-a-vis -vis the number of dates this is not the right diagram look at this next diagram which is from the same height i've taken it is also number of confirmed cases trend but what they have done is it taken from the number of days from the first 1000 cases were reported reported right it's called relative uh, relative data for example many countries the covid was reported on a single a particular day some opened on november china some opened on january india opened on february so the number of days from the date after the first 1000 cases were reported is the x axis and the number of cumulative cases the same data is on the y axis and see the graph it is not upwardly moving it is sloping to the right right the slope of this diagram is changing with slope is coming down this is what we call flattening the curve in in our language right this actually is the same data we have projected nothing different and all the other graphs are other countries india is the red color india is the red color one which you see next slide this is again even more accurate representation should be that x number of days per million and the number of cases per million population is a better uh, representation when you compare countries because countries don't have the equal population so on the x axis is the number of days since the, for the disease appeared and the y axis is number of people infected or confirmed cumulative cases per million population now this is a far more accurate representation again you see where india is preserve the other countries right on the top of the united uae celebrated all of you must have got in whatsapp a powerful video where they celebrated the shutting the lockdown ending with a lot of fireworks and that is uae data on the top on the right above us right and most of the countries are above us india is still of course number of days india is still lesser in the date let's go to the next slide now the death rate now everybody is talking about death rate i wanted to talk about the most important thing called fatality rate is the number of people who die as a percentage of number of confirmed cases look at the data france 14% the fourth column is important italy 14.45% hungary 14 point, these are all advanced countries people have always said france italy they do a large amount of testing uh, france italy started late but all of them are really focused on these advanced countries uk for example 13.97% the world fatality rate world as a whole is 4.9% india's fatality rate 2.97% advanced country look at south korea the fatality is 2.19% the most ideal case everybody talks about in covid treatment covid um, infection uh, um, response is south korea they are on par with south korea what south korea did they did lot more testing they identified the cases much earlier they have far better treatment facilities than india and their death rate is 2.19% our testing rate is very poor we start treatment late our treatment is pathetic and our death rate is 2.97% nobody is able to understand we are one sixth of the whatever the rate for other countries like you know you see netherlands 12.15 all these are very advanced countries so the death rate is more important than deaths it's stupid to talk about number of people dying to talk about what is our death rate because the death rate is really low and the single most reason is our economic dividend or demographic dividend our average age of the population is less than 25 and this is singularly responsible for our death rate being lower next slide so i'm summarizing the death let's let's understand this death in the context uh, our total number of deaths was 17848 over 90 days since the first case was reported or 76 days since the first 100 deaths were reported typically there are some various versions but 100 deaths are reported then i think we take it seriously so 76 days have passed from the day 100 deaths are reported that works out to 234 deaths per day and the maximum which happened a few days ago is 438 right so average death rate in india right now is 0.73% or 26000 deaths per day and corona has increased our death rates by i'm not saying it is increased because a lot of deaths have come down road accidents have come down i'm assuming assuming all deaths are the same it would have increased by 0.003% a 
our death rate. On the other side, India took the credit for the largest number of respiratory diseases in the worldwide. 32% of the global respiratory diseases are in India. And the daily death rate due to respiratory disease alone was 2,834 per day, which is six and a half times COVID. And that happened because of air pollution. Did India shut down the country because of air pollution, which is six and a half times higher than COVID at the highest level right now? The answer is no. So the problem, I think this is the last slide, uh, Shailaja. Next slide. Yeah. Okay. I think we can, we can close it down. I think I've set the context here. My, my problem, which I was saying is we are reporting wrong. We are looking at the wrong things. We are driving everybody up the wall. And in fact, when KTR, one of the meetings I was telling KTR is that if we don't change the narrative from how to save the country from COVID to how to live with the COVID, I think we'll do a great service to the country and live with the reality. Thank you. Over to you, um, Yeram. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Murli. I mean, you, you threw a lot of uh, statistics at us and uh, of course, some of them are, uh, like you said, they throw some light on what exactly uh, is happening and what how we should understand COVID as it is happening. But doesn't this, uh, uh, do you say that lockdown it's a, by itself was a wrong idea then? Uh, because the, the, the claim of the government is that it is because of the lockdown that we are able to contain the spread of the virus. So uh, was lockdown by itself a wrong decision in the first place? Murli, you want to take it and I'll comment right. on that afterwards. I'll request to Jairam to decide whom he wants to reflect. I'm, I'm talking to you, Murli, as a, a further... Uh, yeah, I think my answer to the question is very simple. The lockdown, everybody now established, the lockdown only delays the problem. Because the infection disease rate, I don't think there any existing data to show that by delaying it, the infectivity comes down. The assumption was when the lockdown was announced, they will create capacity to treat people post uh, the post-COVID infrastructure was supposed to be created in the country. Supposed to create more and more incubation centers, more and more hospital capacity. That was the intention. But I don't think there is any data to exist. Even today, after lockdown has been lifted, we are back to square one. So I don't think the timing was right. I would have done the lockdown. If I did the lockdown at that time, then I would have created my capacity. You have not done that. So I think it was the wrong choice. Okay. Thank you, Murli. Uh, I think we'll move to uh, Dr. Guruvaridi now. Uh, yeah, Murli, I, I know Murli's uh, feelings right from the beginning because we got a common WhatsApp group where uh, I know his feelings. Mm -hmm. I agree to some and I disagree to some because as a doctor, I got a different perspective. Right. Uh, Murli is right. This disease is not lethal. Okay, compared to the, this one, the Ebola or H1N1, those are all much more lethal with 20 to 30% of the mortality rate. So corona mortality is hardly 2 to 3%, even in the worst scenario. But the problem with corona is the transmissibility. The transmissibility is the worst in corona compared to others. If you take HIV, unless you go and have a sex with somebody or have a blood transfusion, it won't come. Here, just by speaking, initially it was there sneezing and coughing, but now droplet and even aerosol infection is established. So the transmissibility is lethal. On number two, once you go into that uh, cytokine storm, cytokine storm is the phase three disease, where the inflammatory protective, that means your own police become your killers. So that is one of the worst uh, uh, patho anatomy, uh, pathophysiology of this uh, disease. The cytokine storm, the cytokines are the body's defense mechanisms. And those really became strong and like a whole police battalion have gone onto the streets and burned the whole things, just like that. So that cytokine storm, once it said, the patient dies within 24 hours. And let me tell my friend Morley, I have seen people dying within 24 hours, young people, 40, 50, 60, without any comorbid conditions. So such is the lethality. Tomorrow it can be you or me. So there is no way we can brush this away as saying another common cold. No doubt it is like a common cold, but the lethality once it affects you is much worse. So that's why there is an understandable panic and understandable concern globally. Number two, the lockdown, whether it is right or wrong, I feel for a country like India, 
with 130 crore population, if lockdown is not there, all of us are not in this podium, I'm telling you. Would have been scurrying for uh, some uh, pavement or somewhere to take care of our uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, New York and Italy have gone the same way when they got 100 times better resources than us. By putting the lockdown, we have got five important benefits. Number one, social benefit. That means people understood what is this disease and they are prepared. Number two, the sanitizers, the face masks, and the social distance concepts became clear. By simply wearing the mask, Jairam Garu, we yes. can protect ourselves 70%. If two people wear masks, each of them, the transmissibility is reduced by 90%. So that itself is a big gain because of the lockdown. On the day of the lockdown, if the lockdown is not there, we don't know what is mask. In fact, in the first 15 days, including me, told that mask is not mandatory. So now it is mandatory, it is known. And number three advantage is dexamethasone or steroids have saved the lives. Every 100, there are 70 people are living because of the dexamethasone. On the day one, on January or February or March 24th, before the lockdown, if we, we have not known that, we would have killed so many people. So in other words, the American lessons, the Spain lessons, Italy lessons, have come very handy to us. That itself saved millions of people in India. That is advantage four. Advantage five, though morally disagrees, the whole government setup is not still completely geared. I do agree. But as far as this much preparation, this much awareness, this much readiness for this pandemic is still holding us. So these are the five major important points. Imagine without lockdown, we could have been like a New York. New York people has survived because it's New York. The same thing you imagine here, Dharavi slums, they are now the successful uh, case study. They have successfully uh, 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 prevented the transmissibility much better than any part of India. That is because of the contact tracing. That is because of the Dharavi people are also got tested very well. Where we missed the script is, the tests have not been done adequately at appropriate time, and contact tracing has not been done. Any pandemic, there is no rocket science. There's only three things, three T's. T treatment, testing, and the contact tracing. The tracing, we missed it. The lockdown has worked very well in the first three weeks. The last two, three weeks, we should have tested more, the same 50,000 tests now which we are happening, they should have been done at that time and contact tracing should have been done. Then this thing could not have been there. The, another point is, as Murali rightly said, even now there is nothing like panic. If you take the total population, total death rate, our death rate is much, much lower than any other country. That is because not we are great, because now we got the dexamethasone in our armamentary. I am treating now, as I talk to you, 150 patients in my hospitals. In the 150, there are 20 people only need the ventilator. But I'm very positive 20 out of 20, 15 people will come out because of the steroids. That itself is a big lesson, which we got it from the other countries. So which we could have lost it if we are on the day one. If day one, the lockdown is not there, the total civil unrest would have happened. Even now, that is one bothering me now. Because all the hospitals are completely Chalk a block. We are now completely full. We don't have beds. 20 patients are waiting in the casualty right now as I talk to you. The government hospitals are full. So these numbers keep on increasing. What we now need now is to tell every 100 doctors of the government, there should be 1,000 counselors should be there with the helpline. They should tell everyone, sir, don't panic. Stay at home. Quarantine yourself. And these are the indicators. If you got these symptoms, touch and get in touch with the helpline and we will divert you to the proper hospital. That should be there now. So in other words, the government should have a triage system, centralized triage, where there should be minimum 100 helplines, not one, two. There will be 100 helplines and there should be a mechanism to answer 10,000 phone calls a day. And these phone calls should be properly channelized to particular. If you got a only fever, stay at home. If you got a breathlessness, you had a pulse oximeter. Again, another important lesson, which we got it through the last four or five weeks, is the pulse oximeter. Pulse oximeter is the best screening tool now more than the temperature. You put it just to the finger. If it goes below 90%, you got to see the patient, hospital. And you got to have the respiratory oxygen supply. 
so these are the some of the indicators so by putting a proper helplines by putting a proper triage the government can win back the whole situation it is nothing beyond repair and the another thing is the death rate is hardly 2% in india which is a very very laudable that is because of our innate immunity or whatever the reasons are and second thing is steroids are saving so many lives coming to the vaccines coming to the antiviral drugs these are all not going to do anything for you now whether plague you praxiver or some other injection the vaccine coming at the next year e this year these are all whitewash nothing will come nothing will change the course of the disease nothing will protect you from the disease there is only one social vaccine that is washing the hands putting the mask and maintaining social distance as much as possible that social vaccine is all it's all of us so what all we need is education and counseling and triage and monitoring from the government that's all what you got to do but as murli rightly said the total focus of the media and i'm sure somsha so somsha is here total focus of the media should change no more highest deaths today corona akala vikalo corona is taking the upper hand these are all not right they should now put it we got to live with corona just like corona is like mother in law we have to live with mother in law there is no way we can get her out as simple as that okay you got to live with her only thing is we got to know how much respect to give and how much to act as though you are giving the respect so that's all the important point so these are the my thought process i agree with murli to some extent but i totally disagree with murli that while lockdown is a waste of time no way murli is a more an economist and a sort of uh, uh, how should i put it a mba businessman but he is forgetting the lives here you come and see in the hospitals even one single life which could have been prevented is worth saving and lockdown has prevented millions of uh, lives from being taken let me tell you indian context and i just finished thank, you, thank you dr Ra. one minute uh, sorry can i can i just uh, i think uh, we have lost uh, no. dr gurwaridi you are still there yeah i'm still there sir yeah uh, you have put a very strong case you know lockdown and uh, change in perspective and things like that now what murli said and what you have said i mean these two things run parallelly you know uh, for the econ- economy to start mm-hmm. and saving lives these these two runs uh, these two issues run parallelly now would you suggest that uh, given the situation now would you suggest that uh, another lockdown is necessary uh, country wide or should it be confined to areas where the problem is very serious correct sir i will say lockdown for at least two weeks is now needed for hyderabad government to clean the house there are lot of cobwebs there are lot of unnecessary mops are there to clean the house you need a lockdown in other words these 15 days there should be extensive counseling to the people there should be as i told you there should be a robust helplines there should be a robust triage methodology that should be there for that you need a lockdown people let them go indoors let them switch on to the television and let them realize these are the things to do nobody needs to run to the hospital but now they are all running No, okay I, that has to be prevented that can be prevented only by another lockdown with a structured program as murli said just shutting the lockdown and the government not doing anything it doesn't work government has to have a proper plan in place for the next 15 days in that the helpline the counseling and the triage triage is very important uh, jeram gar that means if one guy says i got a severe breathlessness my respiration is falling down to 80% he should be guided to the nearest hospital whether it's a private or government but the government should have a dashboard where each hospital's rooms ventilators available here that sort of mechanism just like your uh, elections bulletins you right. got to have that big dashboard. dashboard you should know whether this hospital has got ventilators in real time every minute that should be up, 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 upgraded right. and that sort of dashboard should be there and that needs tremendous it tremendous doctors and tremendous amount of manpower tremendous amount of direction is needed then you need that 15 days lockdown then the you will win the war before i let go of you dr gurwaraj one more uh, quick question uh, you know one of the things that murli highlighted uh, 
was that uh, capacity building did not take place during the lockdown. The lockdown was essentially meant for one of the reasons, main, main factor was uh, capacity building. Do you think it has happened or uh, do you think that we should use another lockdown to at least now better later? Definitely, than definitely, sir. Morally, again, I beg to differ. Capacity building has been done to reasonable extent. I won't say 100%. 100% is not possible in any democratic country. Okay, capacity building is a Delhi, you take Bombay, you take Dharav Islam. They have managed to control this virus just because of the system building. Capacity building means this not, does not need a quantification of the beds all the time. It is a robust systems, putting the systems in place also. Now Delhi, there is a 10,000 bed capacity places there once I place. So all this is capacity building. But of course, as Murli envisaged, it may not have reached his level, but there is some. But it needs more, no doubt about that. We cannot deny on that. Thank you. It needs much more. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Murwaridi. I think now we'll uh, move to uh, Karnendra Jasti. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, from the industry perspective, uh, uh, what position would you take? I mean, do you subscribe to this now? I mean, things are moving. It's, it's a reverse of uh, uh, life over livelihood. Now, now the governments are moving towards opening up the economy more and more. Uh, what is your position on this? I mean, uh, what, what do you feel? Given the situation, COVID-19 is a very, very critical situation. We are in a very critical situation. At the same time, the economy has taken a bad hit all around. What, what would you say? What, what is your uh, perspective from the industry side? Uh, unmute yourself, Mr. Jasti. Sorry. Sorry, I'm unmuted. Yeah, uh, the industry per se uh, is a little bit, I mean, we just tried to get a survey on most of the industries that we talked to and we had a survey done on this. Actually, a report has been compiled on that and they are, most of them are against the second lockdown for their industries which is going to really hurt uh, just not the economy, but also um, but the prospects, you know, and the finances of the companies, their structures and their taxation and all the things that are uh, per se, which is required for them to run the industry. But, uh, but I really agree with Dr. Gurwa Reddy that the first lockdown was a must, yes, because it was a curve for us to learn, you know, how to go about things and what to do uh, and how to uh, control these diseases or flatten the curve, whatever it be. And as Mr. Murli said that we should have built up the capacities by then and the government should have put in all its force, just not on the capacity, the background support structures, the infrastructure for uh, information and devolution and all that, which I, all of us feel that there has been a little lax in that and there's a failure in in those lines and the testing has been stopped for some reason and now of course the private industry has been let in go and the contract tracing has not been done because there's no testing done so this is how the spread has been more wide wider than it should have been uh, i still have a question i didn't understand about the thing you know i could have asked dr gurwaridi if he's still there there's a antibody test that's there the kits are available but the government still doesn't permit you to do it like you might have already got the antibody, you got it and you are out of it with a mild uh, uh, fever or anything. So this test, if it's done, at least it gives a understanding of the numbers that are there and how many have recovered out of it. And But for whatever be the reason which they uh, know better than us, I mean, uh, it's not been allowed. And we are still in the dark on the numbers and the actual position on ground. So... I mean, in fact, I'm running my industry and I mean, uh, I have, as a essential service, I have run that even during the lockdown. I was all through April, I was running it May and we really are fortunate. I mean, we have been following some strict norms and, you know, we have the distancing because factories are usually large with less manpower these days. And we have no case or incident so far, but we really made uh, we could really pay off all these uh, employees that we have without any deductions, just because, and we really pay taxes to the government, which helps them in these times. 
so we have to really see how to control this and uh, keep it at a lower level um than really go for a second lockdown but as dr gurwari we said that you know uh, the second lockdown gives us the time to educate on what's what's next you know earlier we were thinking about masks and all that but now it has become a reality that some day or the other everybody should get uh, infected and instead of having a mad rush at the hospitals which is failing to and which is at the brims and they are breaking at the seams uh the point is now we have to really educate the people on the next step evolving it what is the kits that they need to have uh you know like a pulse oximeter as i said the pulse oximeter gives you a low levels then okay drops below 90s and but it is still above 80 then what do i need to do maybe i still need not go to the hospital an oxygen mask or an oxygen cylinder uh, at hand might really serve the purpose so we should have some centers where they are available and the uh, no uh, and the data should be available to the public on what to do on this and the dissemination of information on this next step after uh, if you are infected what to do is the most critical thing and if you uh, which will lead to less panicking among the public and if you are panicking less then you are getting yourself better so the, we have to have a detailed data center which the government should set up as early as possible it's an emergency measure and we have to really look at you know how we uh, um get the data to the people get the doctors to their houses if they are on home quarantine or some hotels that are taken for this uh, semi uh, morbid cases where where they are having some decent monitoring to be done and what are the little equipments that you might have even at home to make sure that you survive this scare and once you are out of it then i am sure you have a reasonable um, uh, case of you know getting your antibodies done and you might be better so this is where i think the testing should be extensive sir and all forms are possible when the kits are available we should not hold them up to it because to keep the numbers low or you know not not to say that we want to don't have panic instead of thinking it's going to be a panic it will be giving us good reason to trace out what which are the areas and where we should contain then uh, let it spread wide as it is but industry should uh, uh, and businesses should survive sir uh, for it's good for the government good for the uh, people around and i am sure without that economy rolling out there'll be a definitely a social unrest and uh, uh, longer problems which might be even a bigger problem than the covid itself so that's my feeling and we should not going for a serious lockdown of all the industry and trade thank you so much uh, mr jasti i'm just getting it off as yeah. yeah yeah thank you so much and uh, now there are others uh, i'm sure who would like to put in keep their perspective uh, before i go to the others uh, let me ask som uh, som shekhar are you around i can't see your uh, you are not on the screen uh, som shekhar what to support aski Dr. Bhakti, hello. Ah, uh, Soom Shekhar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we have got the perspective from Murli. We have got it from uh, uh, Dr. Gurwaradi and uh, Mr. Jasti. You know, I think uh, Murli has uh, virtually, I think, slammed the media uh, for probably exaggerating or not giving the right information. And others have also spoken about it. Now. Uh, in such a situation i mean we are i mean media is guilty of sometimes painting a very morbid picture of what exactly is happening around the country uh do you think that media has failed in its uh, role uh to disseminate information as it should be done uh, sensitizing people on various issues and uh, giving essentially giving a correct picture of what is the situation Uh, rather than just to some extent sensationalizing I mean, do you agree with that you have heard what murli uh, has said you have heard what uh, you already has said i mean what do you feel what is your uh, take on that i think uh, uh, murli has been quite uh, you know caustic on the media and gurwari uh, ligar also i think in a way right to say that the media To play a more constructive role, um, 
Of course, I think that is the expectation from uh, leaders in the society. The you know also the people in general that media has to be more responsible. But uh, let me tell you, I think in uh, most crisis situations, the media becomes a whipping boy for all you know people who are responsible to deliver. And I think this again uh, has shown the same tendency. Now, as a journalist, you know I see four distinct phases that have happened in COVID-19. And I think let's be honest and frank that uh, COVID-19 is something which uh, has caught the best of scientists, the best of administrators completely off guard. Now, if you start on the premise, let me look at you know what has happened in uh, India. You know, the first trend I saw was, this is not our problem. Let me give an example, you know, in... Uh, Around February 20th, there was a major conference in Hyderabad called BioAsia. And you know, international experts, scientists had come here. And one of the key speakers was the co-discoverer of Ebola virus. Now, I had a chance to go there and I interviewed him. And uh, in fact, talked to him about uh, coronavirus. And he had clearly warned that coronavirus will be very difficult to uh, you know, tame. It will spread fast. It will be more, uh, you know, mortality will be higher than H1N1 or the earlier uh, swine flu, etc. And uh, he said not much information was easily available from China so and so on. So I came back and did a story. But, uh, you know, because it was not, uh, you know, assumed, that it is an India problem. The coverage was also not very much. At that point of time, if you look at the social media was full of, you know, this Chinese problem and, you know, a lot of TikTok, uh, uh, you know, videos were afloat. So people did not talk about coronavirus as a problem here. The second trend is it was dismissive. Now, if you look at, uh, you know, some of the leaders uh, in this country, and including our chief minister, uh, Mr. Uh, K. Chandrasekhar Rao, and our neighboring chief minister, Mr. Vyas Jagan. You know, both of them said, you know, it will not affect us, it is not a serious problem, and so on. So that uh, dismissive nature was very, very evident. And more, you know, information from even scientists came that the Indians have better immune system, and also this high temperature, sunlight and all will kill the virus and so on. The third was a the more uh, you know difficult thing called uh, denial or cover-up. So right or wrong, the state government here and in some others have adopted a low testing approach. So with less tests, less number of cases, it was assumed that we are winning the battle. Now we come to the fourth trend which I saw. Now this is a more uh, recent in the last one month, it is an overdrive. Now, with the spread of the virus, you know, widened, more tests are done and more cases are being, you know, reported. So what has happened? The government has opened up and it's a free for all. Government hospitals, corporate, private practitioners, everyone has been given a free hand. So now we see a complete, you know, a information outflow, which has happened. Now, in this background, you know, what is the role of media? Let me be a bit clear on this. You know, by its very nature, media is into the information business and not publicity. I, I would like to remind many of the speakers here and others also that uh, I think we are not in publicity. We are not just here to report only positive things. We are a watchdog role. We would like to point out certain things that are not happening based on what information we have. Therefore, journalists will try to get news from reliable sources. For publicity, the government has its own information department, press information bureau, and so on. Now, the biggest challenge that uh, media and all of us have got is in this crisis, both the government and the media have been caught off guard. We are unprepared. The government put a lockdown which I also support. The lockdown was a necessity to understand, prepare, 
and face this uh, problem better. And we also had the advantage of China, Spain, Italy, UK, USA to learn from. Finally, you know, this is something which came out of the blue. You know, we are supposed to be on, on the field. We were driven home and work from home became the norm. Now, what does work from home mean? That it denies a journalist a, a important perspective of seeing, talking, and reporting. Now, therefore, my entire uh, professional challenge became talking to people and reporting. Because the, you know, the scare, the fear which even doctors, you know, told about this uh, coronavirus, essentially made journalists also take enough precautions. And as we have seen, you know, the state governments here or anywhere in this country, the uh, protection and also the steps to prevent this uh, disease were inadequate because not a journalist view, but uh, medical professionals from All India Institute to Bombay to our own Gandhi Hospital came onto the streets and said they had lacked protective devices. They needed protection. They needed better equipment. Therefore, journalists are a challenge lot in this whole thing. But then I'm not trying to say that, you know, we. Uh, have done a good job or we did not do. We have a learning process here. And uh, if you look at, um, you know, journalists today, you know, we are challenged on many subjects and uh, health, science, technology are not uh, the high priority. Therefore, we do not have so many people who can understand and write. So therefore, what I as a journalist who covered science, technology, health over a long period of time, you know, would like to tell the panelists here is, yes, there were deficiencies, there was confusion, there was, you know, a focus on the bad news. The, you know, the whole uh, media narrative sometimes was driven around highlighting daily the number of deaths, the number of cases, and so on. You know, but what uh, drove the media to this is, we are dependent on the information that is available to us. And, uh, you know, most often in such a crisis, the government should have taken a lot of initiative to provide correct information. And, uh, you know, you can debate on, you know, whether the government has given the correct information and time and so on. But, uh, you know, I would like to suggest a few things because, you know, in 100 days of lockdown, uh, we have definitely learned a few lessons. We have learned from foreign countries and so on. So I think it's now time that we collectively defeated this uh, virus, then, you know, blame each other. So what are my suggestions, you know, in this uh, are, you know, can we learn from how AIDS control happened and AIDS was reported? You know, we had uh, a national AIDS control organization and state units. Interestingly, you know, Andhra Pradesh at that time, the combined Andhra Pradesh had a very successful campaign called Puli Raja. You know, the campaign uh, ran around this character who managed to, you know, control this whole, uh, you know, AIDS and so on. There were wonderful tales, stories and so on. So why not the campaign, something similar to that, be run today? The second is, during the AIDS, a cocktail of uh, drugs were also developed. And, you know, India was a leader in this. The three drugs, uh, which were a dollar or something, if I remember correctly, were offered by CIPLA. And today, the three drug cocktail is the best. And most companies which manufacture the drugs are from India and uh, uniquely from Hyderabad. The second thing is, why not the medical association like the IMA be more pro proactive and engage the media? You know, I think medical professionals are now at least better equipped, better understand the whole, the whole situation. Therefore, I think they should be proactive in providing information. Third is the government information departments should be more organized in putting out regular information as per media deadlines. You should understand, see, the media is a different animal today. There are different needs, different languages. Therefore, the government uh, information department should be more equipped to give details 
according to the needs of the media. As Murli says, we know we have been highlighting wrong stories, we have been highlighting deaths more often, and you know less number of positive stories. Perhaps the, the, the journalist initiative is definitely needed, and also the government. You know why not the government? through hospitals, through doctors, provide access to people who have recovered, people who have fought this war, people who have done, you know, better and, you know, explain their stories. For example, I have found a story about Peter Payot, whom I earlier told he is a, a director of the International Tropical uh, Medicine in London. He co-discovered Ebola virus. He has worked 50 years on uh, viruses. He is called you know, one of the fathers of virology. You know, he was affected by coronavirus in March. In May, I read a story in an uh, international journal about his battle and how he won. Now, I picked up that story and, you know, wrote a story in India. So, if, imagine a virus catching up with the man who worked on viruses for 50 years and how he defeated it. His story was so exciting. So we can produce such stories in the Indian context in Hyderabad, perhaps with a better, you know, access to information from hospitals and doctors. The journalists themselves, you know, too, need to engage with the right experts to put out credible information and not quote anybody or everybody. For example, you know, I don't I do not get access to an epidemiologist or a public health expert. I can't be talking to a cardiologist or, you know, somebody else and putting out expert views. So I think there should be a credible exchange of information. The fourth one is, you know, we need a set of professionals and a set of government officials to reach to on a daily basis. Can we, as a journalist and the government, have a set of experts in health to reach to so that we get credible information on a regular basis. Now, the media body itself, you know, coming to our own responsibility, you know, some of the organizations like uh, the Press Academy, the Press Club, the TV Association, I think should be proactive in, uh, you know, facilitating greater interaction and flow of discussions to create public awareness. I think we should also take proactive measures instead of just trying to pull up the government for its... Uh, you know, whatever loopholes or what we perceive as the wrongs. Finally, I think it is clearly understood today that uh, COVID-19 has divided the whole problem into two things. One is a medical or health emergency. Second is the economic emergency. Now, for the medical emergency, I think uh, we need to focus on how to get uh, good information from health experts, awareness, campaigns, you know, focus on creating and improving health infrastructure and so on. And we have come a reasonably good way in, uh, in this direction. The second is the emergency, uh, economic emergency, which I think is a big crisis that uh, the country is facing. And I have, you know, we have Murli, we have Jasti Aru, you know, and also representatives from uh, uh, Papsi Shekhar Agarwal. I think these associations should engage with the media. You know, okay, media will definitely try to reach you out, but you should engage with the media and keep telling us that, uh, you know, these are the, the problems with us. This is what we want to do. And, you know, highlight all these issues on a regular basis. It cannot be SOS or it cannot be once in a way, but there should be a regular flow of information and exchange. This is what I think we need to look at. There is uh, blaming each other is, uh, I think, the easiest thing to do, but I think that will not help much. So the challenge now is more an integrated approach to ensure better flow of information. And I think... Uh, please... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. That was a clear picture you gave about uh, what media has done so far and what it should be doing. Uh, that was a good uh, clear picture you gave. I just want to quickly ask you, sir, is it because this reporting, what we see on the native side, is it because uh, it's a belief that in not only in India or across the world, that the bad news sells. No, I think that is <laughs> see, funda see, that is fundamentally. I think that is the nature of uh, the 
media which uh, began in the say last 50 60 years that no news is good news bad news is news or bad news is news <laughs> and i think uh, the narrative has changed today even good news is uh, good news because as i told you the story of how this uh, co discoverer ebola you know fought this and uh, won that story was very widely read so you know a story which is told well for example you know if i have access to a patient who has done who has fought coronavirus in the gandhi hospital and then i can write a story i am sure many people will read it if the same thing is shown on tv it will be seen what i am saying is the government medical association the, the you know the industry bodies should be proactive in giving this information i think you can't be waiting for us our journalists will be only chasing you know what is uh, not correct what is wrong because that is the basic role of the uh, media not to praise uh, publicity yeah. information public relations pib government has huge machinery for publicity so what i am into is not doing publicity for government i am here to you know point out what is not correct or what needs to be done what should be improved so i think Swamsi. this clarity should be a bit understood then we can do better yeah uh, with due due regards can i just talk on a minute sir yeah please uh, somshekar sir excellent talk and i i i wish and i pray that the indian uh, media should be as poised and as elegant and as committed as you are i'm not praising you because you are in the forum i know you over the years and that sort of maturity and that sort of analytical perspective if the media has got the whole complex will be different the whole complex the perspective will be different and uh, i salute you for your uh, perspective i wish you continue like this for more years oh thank you very much uh, i'm sure uh, somshekar has sent a message loud and clear out uh, let's only hope that uh, media uh, takes it on itself to change and evolve as per changing times i would now like to uh, go to doc, uh, mr shekar agarwal uh, mr agarwal uh, from the industry perspective again you know though the economy has uh, so called it has been Uh, it's kind of jump started and there are efforts to revive the economy and uh, there are of course several restrictions on how you function how industries function uh, government has come to the rescue of uh, msmes and stuff like that uh, there are a lot of restrictions there are there is some help coming but still you know i mean like a person like bajaj i mean he has come out very very strongly against the lockdown and he said it, it everything has to open up there there should be no lockdown there should nothing life should go on uh what would you, what is your take on what what should be done is there is there a, is there a via media what is it what should be done uh, uh jaram garu thank you very much uh, yes very important talk there are a uh, couple of things one is uh, the business and industry in day to day also they got their own challenges So that time, uh, uh, business and industries are closed. This is a very big uh, uh, challenge on the entrepreneur, and uh, certainly it is. Uh, it also affects the economy, and also it has been uh, shared by uh, our president, Mr. Jasti, and also. So it is uh, the livelihood and the life, which is very, very. Both the things are very, very important. But it's uh, the time why the lockdown and all these things are there. It's only the contingency measures when that thing is working out. Then only go for the lockdown. It is not a very uh, amicable choice for the society to go for. But once it is required, it has to be done. And it's uh, well said, uh, Dr. Guru already also the lockdown. What was done? It is good for the society. See the time uh, the people are healthy, people survive. Then only the business and industry and both are interlinked. It's not a uh, lively is different and. Uh, I, we have to take both the things together, and ultimately good for the society. Now I have got a small note. What I prepare, this goes to. I can give me a couple of minutes time. I'll give my perspective on the whole whole scene. So, so there are unprecedented deaths and suffering in Telangana 
because of the covid 19 yesterday we lost one friend of ours two days back i lost one relative one week back i lost another relative now the thing is so challenging one of the friend who lost a life uh, yesterday challenging it was a challenge for him to get a uh, hospital room two of our uh, relative i lost their lives because they could not be in their uh, hospital could not give them the treatment and they lost their life so here the thing is how uh, the corporate hospital they are not able to provide the services so here something is you have to relook government also i just put a note and i'll tell you uh, we have got full confidence over the chief minister and ktr garu that covid challenge can only be addressed if they they take the leadership they take the ownership to solve this challenge with the, their strongest political will so what are the challenges the covid deaths are much more than they are reported the whatever cases are being reported now other other places i am getting there much more even i don't want to tell someone is telling maybe almost 1000 1000 is certainly wrong but 3 4 is also so this is one thing number of non covid deaths is also very high because of hospitals are not treating and not admitting and rejecting this patient earlier never we heard of in our life that hospitals and doctors are not uh, accepting the patient now they are uh, oh, they are uh, rejecting the patient causing a lot of death one of the challenge is non availability of bed in the hospital so patients agreeing for their demand to pay even 1 or 2 lakhs rupees per day they are also not getting beds the number of covid testings are minimal so here the thing is just like truck is coming and we are keeping our eyes closed it cannot be done so here testing must be available number of uh, more testing some must be available all of us be here in that fair right number of covid patients are much more than they are reported the government hospitals are not having sufficient beds and proper sanitization and proper service there is acute shortage of movable oxygen cylinder the demand of corporate hospital charges which is 1 to 2 lakhs rupees is extremely high and 99% of our cities and population they cannot afford it a few suggestion what i suggest to you that again the chief minister of kati garu to take the responsibility ownership and leadership of our cities of telangana considering them as their own children and family members with total empathy not to suffer or lose their lives because of the improper medical facilities now second is to keep passive infrastructure in place in government hospitals that is beds washrooms oxygen cylinders doctors and health workers the third is similar facilities must be created in many private hospitals and nursing homes then like madhya pradesh because i have some connection in madhya pradesh i am in touch with madhya pradesh like madhya pradesh government is paying for the treatments of all covid patients uh, Uh, same can be done by our state government madhya pradesh population sir is double than uh, telangana their revenues less than uh, telangana the time madhya pradesh is doing certainly it is a call for our state also to begin in madhya pradesh they have formed strong teams of health department police department municipal department revenue department keeping all the proactive officers uh, charge of the team and side track the inefficient officers then madhya pradesh has created number of fever clinics and they are conducting massive covid tests the chief minister himself has made this top most priority for, uh, uh, and with daily and close monitoring and is spending a lot of amount to solve this challenge now the last one in covid timely decision and actions are most important because any delay will cause exponential loss of human life and loss of other resources we have full trust again in our chief minister and his able team and will be able to ha- handle covid challenges but it must be done immediately and effectively the government of telangana can take benefit from the learnings of experiences from the state like madhya pradesh odisha and kerala to overcome covid challenge to help their citizens to have their life and uh, and people to live healthy life so it's very very important because there is an absolute panic is there now here one of our aunt who was 80 years wants to come to us family is suffering with the covid so what to do because i don't have any back support here i cannot take the government hospital i don't have support of the private hospital what to do so whole society is in a panic so here the thing is uh, because uh, all of you are doing a great job so let us take a joint responsibility as somshekar garu is telling not to blame each other we had all of us to work as a team to solve the problem and dr gurwardi was excellent uh, in his presentation he knows much more about the thing and such experts are available 
certainly we can address. So let the industry, let the media, let the medical experts, let the government, everyone be on the same play, platform to solve this challenge. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Agarwal. Uh, I would like to get on to uh, Mr. Ramakant Dinani. Uh, is he around uh, or is Dr. Bhakti there? Uh, Dr. Subodh is there from ASCII. Yeah. Uh, so, Dr. Subodh. Yeah. Myself, I will complete within two, three minutes, sir, if you permit. Okay. Shall I proceed? Yeah. Is that uh, Mr. Inani? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Yes. I want a quick question and uh, I would like a brief uh, answer. You know, the other day when I went to a Kirana shop, uh, Deram. Yeah. Deram. Yes. Deram, before uh, we start, uh, Dr. Bakshi is uh, stuck somewhere. In his place, Subodh will speak on ASCII side after oh. we finish. Okay. 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 Subodh. okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, friends. I think uh, uh, nice to hear from all the panelists. Uh, uh, one second. I'll get back to you, Mr. Inani, after uh, Mr. Subodh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think. Uh, uh, Having worked with the health department, I think ASCII has been working with the health department for a couple of years and uh, both in the private sector, corporate sector, as well as in the government. Uh, let me tell you that ASCII, uh, the Telangana department, the health department has actually uh, done well in the health sector. So if, I think it is not that we are lagging behind. I think the last 10 years, if you look at all the health uh, initiatives taken by the government, I think uh, we have some very flagship programs which has been done. I think even the current government has done tremendously good work, mostly so in the primary sector. So it may not be much in the uh, tertiary sector, especially the Aragish and all already running. But I think the focus of the government has always been in the health sector. Now, and I think I will not blame the government when it started to talk mostly to rely only on the government sector. So when it came to testing, when it came to treatment, they relied heavily on the government sector. But Right now, I think this is a time for the private sector or the, them to sort of support the government. Because right now, we all know that uh, the number of cases have increased, number of people crowding to the hospitals have increased. So this is a time where we need to give support to the... And we know that from yesterday itself, I think the Honorable Health Minister has visited private medical colleges asking for help for in the terms of beds. So I think uh, the private sector is now slowly being brought into the system. I think this is the right time. And uh, as uh, Mr. Somshegar rightly said, I think now there's a free flow where every private sector, the corporate hospital is all allowed to treat. I think where what we could suggest is some sort of a mechanism. Like, for example, rates are fixed in the private sector. But can we have something? Because you know that there's a differential rates which are going on. So maybe government can come out and say, yes, we could incentivize you. But uh, we should have a sort of a differential package, okay, for what is the rate for medicines, what is the rate for the PP kits. This is from the hospitalization point. So this is one area uh, which I feel, I think the government is doing the right thing. I think initially they did it on their own. Now they're bringing the private sector. Now they are not depriving anybody. They're trying to increase the beds. Already their own, they're creating their own infrastructure like Telangana Institute of Medical Sciences. But right now, I think a collaborative effort is something which we require. The second point I would like to raise is about the capacity building. We all know that I think which everybody has been talking about, the pe people are still not clear. If I get a COVID symptom, should I go and book a bed is what everybody asks. So I think everybody knows in the first seven days, we may not need it unless you have the symptoms. So that sort of capacity building, health communication uh, for a shorter period. So what should we do if you have a basic uh, health problem? Those type of health communication measures also have to be done. And we have also seen in Telangana that there's a little bit of pressure for the health workers. So Gandhi Hospital, we had doctors uh, getting into problems. So I think there is a lead of, I think if a lockdown do come in for the next two weeks or three weeks, I think uh, as Dr. Guru already rightly said, there is a need for sort of uh, doing a little bit of activities by saying that, okay, let us support the government. Let us do some training for them. Like for example, how to deal with patients, how to, because there's a, there's a little bit of tension Although I, we have also seen that the mortality rate is not very high, but people are very, very touchy about that. So health communication, capacity building could be done at this time, uh, which will help definitely the government. And I think the private sector has to sort of support at this point. Uh, so uh, my, my two points are were those, I think one, uh, private sector, rather than sort of competing with the government sector to support the government sector, it's a great opportunity. And, and I really feel that the corporate sector, I think, including Dr. Guru already was speaking, are more than willing to help the government. I think I don't think to, you know, everybody's stretching time. So I, I don't believe that only government uh, supports the poor people. The government, so we can link with Ayurveda, we can support them to come 
so that both public and the private sector and not to forget the community organizations i think as we you are talking about reaching out to poor to re reduce panic you have to bring in the community organizations get them on board let them do those messages because many times what government tries to give a communication may not be effective like especially we have in hyderabad the general uh, the ghmc there are youth clubs there are other self help groups which could be sort of handed over and give these are the model which has worked in states like kerala so i think uh, i think i would uh, suggest i think and the last two points uh, one is about the data i think data dissemination is very important i think media has a big role the correct data uh, in fact initially uh, uh, we didn't have the number of tests and all but now if you look at uh, i think all those data are available yeah. i think data dissemination also helps us in forecasting so academic institutes like us also gets all the information and last i think we learned should learn from innovations i think there is a lot of innovations happening in kerala in korea different places and i think our dr guruvaridi and many of the panelists already highlighted that because of those innovations we could do better so i think this is a continuous process it's not something we win or lose here but i think we need to keep learning keep updating and i think what i'm really saying is that the private sector the corporate organizations academic institutes are more than willing to work along with the government to uh, to handle this pandemic thank you thank you uh, dr subodh for giving your perspective i think one of the important points that you made is that uh, the the private sector should complement the government efforts which is very very important in a situation like uh, uh, covid uh, 19 uh, can i now get on to uh, mr inani uh, very briefly i mean let me just tell you uh, what happened when i went to a kirana shop uh, a couple of days ago you know he had a flourishing business for pre covid and uh, when i just inquired with him about how the business was you know i was quite shocked when he said you know i'm thinking of closing down and uh, the reasons he gave was uh, there there are no supplies even things like uh, fmcg products even they are not uh, being supplied he says i have to go every morning on get the stuff on my vehicle in my vehicle and uh, i have to kind of park my vehicle in the queue and it's all become a huge uh, headache the, the 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 word he used was metal torture right i i can't go on with this kind of thing any longer now these are small businessmen uh, the so called some small businessmen uh, how 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 do you think uh, uh, the government or anybody can help or associations like yours how how can they help the small businesses uh can you tell us something about that uh, i will not subscribe to the views expressed by the kirana shop owner because myself has been going around all the big uh, this uh, chains of uh, big supermarkets like uh, uh, this uh, ratnadeep and uh, reliance and all and i found that uh, supplies are adequately available at all the uh, stores Uh, only thing they, was, okay. sorry to interrupt you here i think places like ratnadeep they have a centralized uh, system hey, I mean, i'm system. talking about the uh, common uh, kirana market uh, kirana shop that you find in, uh, in each street you know there are dime a dozen yes sir i will come to that also in the big stores also all things are available but the uh, packed item ready to eat items are not available even in the big stores because there was a lockdown period manufacturing was not there in the bikaner wala uh, this uh, bikano or that uh, seo and all those uh, mixture products but uh, all other kirana shops uh, this fmcg supply supply chain is uh, well maintained this metro is a very specialized store which are dealing in the wholesale supply of the fmcg products and majority of the kirana people they are getting at a cheaper rate from the metro than directly getting from the fmcg so i don't i have not observed any such uh, shortfall in the supply in the kirana shop not the public is suffering except uh, as i stated only to the extent of the ready to eat foods there is a acute uh, short supply is there sir and and one uh, item one i want to add sir to, to the observation of dr gurwaditi that uh, what the lockdowns uh, definitely helped uh, the public mainly the illiterate public to have uh, cater to the awareness required for this uh, sanitizing and all uh, i want to go at, uh, bring to the notice uh, that uh, in our ancient india which uh, there is was a practice which we can see in the tirumala temple and elsewhere while offering service to the god the priest uh, 
will keep a cloth mask on the his uh, mouth while and or while offering the nevetya and preparing same thing the doctors are telling after the modern uh, this thing mm. so we say what we call muddy muddy in our uh, right, right. <laughs> what doctors are prescribing is nothing but muddy which i have seen in my house through my great grandmother i have seen the same practices that all we have to practice sir yes sir thank you sir thank you mr nani i think uh, we have covered more or less everybody of the panel i don't think anybody is left out right mr jaram yep everybody that keeps me of many things i can say of last few words if you don't mind yeah but yeah uh, very briefly what i thought was uh, okay you can continue 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 on yeah i just have only we want to close the discussion on action forward because i think the purpose of this meeting was to open up the debate to find out what can we do now right that is the focus right yeah see so that's exactly focus, what i was about to ask yeah what can be done now i have put a few points for you quickly for everybody to see i just put uh, one thing on can you see the slide now yes yeah yes. Yeah, this is what can be done. I'm like focusing on that rather than, as uh, somebody said, no point blaming, etc. That is, that is not much of use. We should focus on what can be done. So I'm talking about two things. One is how do we improve post-COVID communication, and based on what I heard, first is I think triad, uh, what Dr. Garwar already said about creating information from the hospitals, from the central system, and disseminating the information on availability. of beds and treatment capability treatment morally 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 let me does not try a triage t r i a g e okay triage yeah g that means triage means basically it is like a in war when you get the multiple casualties you decide which one goes where which one gets the maximum treatment which one can be neglected which is a hopeless case like that that is called triage yeah okay all right we'll change it to triage yeah we'll change it now now the second part is more importantly is that daily briefing by media of media by experts i think that's something i strongly feel i think the us government was doing it very religiously new york uh, governor was doing we need to do at the state level media to focus on recovered cases as much as death cases i think that's what i i think uh, we also heard um, uh, som shekhar also agreeing with me there are lots and lots of good cases and i also gave you statistics the recovery rates are more than the number of people who are contracting right now and that's becoming a larger percentage than the people who are infected now and focus on the right indicators instead of focusing on total number of covid cases maybe covid cases a percentage of something ratio of something will be meaningful now as far as the infrastructure is concerned i'm definitely this is my idea i'm sure it's open for debate we should have three three tier architecture for treating this there has to be a quarantine facility for people who are suspected they not even identified second pre hospitalization for people who are tested positive and the people are critical care there has to be a link these three separation of facilities will help a lot in creating higher capacity for the critical care second is creating a mobile facility for hospitals to treat patients at home as well as in the pre hospitalization stage using the 108 infrastructure as we all saw yesterday the ap government has substantially increased the capacity by mobile Phenomenal. significantly and we can we also have got enough capacity in 108 mobile van and doctors can visit at home or they could visit in the uh, pre hospitalization stage expand the pre uh, hospitalization stage to nursing homes not mobilization sorry it should be hospitalization tier nursing home should be a very important area i think we are really looking at expanding to hospitals we can look at nursing homes and expand the quarantine facilities in districts so that people don't travel to hyderabad today most of the testing is also i am told last time somebody was mentioning all the testing is largely focused on hyderabad we need to create testing facilities and quarantine facilities in districts and the last one is aski piki and ftcci are together working on a report which we should publish in one or two days time and what can the government do on the above area in both with more data and more um, uh, analytics so that's what we plan to do and summary i wanted to close the discussion by saying i was when i said about the uh, lockdown the question was in a lockdown it is always important to understand the cost side the cost side of lockdown i think many of us have not spoken about i think many stories have appeared about what happened to the migrant labor so i think the question would have been we could have planned the lockdown for better we could have allowed the migrant to go first we could have improved that used the facility for extra uh, extra capacity creation but in short i still hold my position it was ill timed 
and ill executed yeah thank you over to you jerem yeah thank you mostly i think uh, you kind of uh, set the trend for uh, corrective measures because the moment dr guru already said it is triage and not to triage you immediately changed it that's the kind of uh, action we should probably see in the coming days when it comes to corrective measures uh, sir jerem sir Can I just can I just add? See, basically, the government should now come with a think tank and a right. Yeah, think tank need not be <clears throat> should not be confined only to the government officials. With all due respect to the government officials, sometimes they miss the <clears throat> uh, perspective. So people like Jay Prakash Narayan is there, mm. uh, who was a collector, IAS, an excellent administrator, and a doctor himself. Mm. Uh, so those sort of people like Murli Dharan, these people should be roped in, and government should form a robust think tank, okay. and they should monitor this for the next 60 days on a regular, real-time basis and on a wartime footing. Yes. And Murli suggested wonderful uh, that quarantine, pre-hospitalization, and the critical care, all three should be monitored by the government and can be monitored. Only thing is the dashboard should be there, and the think tank should be there. Uh, no, let me just. Ah, uh, Guruva sir, uh, can you please change the camera? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can uh, Can I sum it up, please? I mean, uh, when we began the uh, discussion, actually, our idea was to kind of uh, uh, converge at some point of time and see what can be done to inform the people about what should be done. Okay. Now, generally, there has been a consensus that India is doing fairly well. I mean, it's not as bad as uh, the other countries. We are doing fairly well, but a lot more needs to be done uh, because there is there has been a lot of uh, uh, you know, difference of opinion on the lockdown. Uh, with Murli saying it it, it was ill timed, and uh, but most people felt that uh, lockdown was essential. And uh, see, when we started the the main one of the main things was that. Uh, There is a lot of confusion among the people. How do we remove the confusion among the people? That I think we need a little more clarity on that. And uh, people's participation in fighting COVID is the single most important factor. I think that is something that we all have to stress on. And like uh, uh, like Som suggested and others also uh, spoke of the same thing. We have to have an integrated approach. among uh, government private sector media i mean all of, all of us have to get together and try to solve the problem okay now but people's participation is paramount which is something i think lacking very badly lacking in india i don't know how we can disseminate the information to the grassroots i mean to the people in the, the in fact what i hear is the people in the villages are doing far better than people in towns and cities I mean, which is actually a pathetic uh, narrative to what exactly is happening in our country. Uh, we, if nobody has anything else to say, I would like to say thank you, thank you to everyone. And, uh, so, yes, somebody had to say something. Uh, sir, one social thinker has uh, remarked. I observed that uh, yearly one and a half lakh people are dying due to accidents, and due to the lockdown, such uh, deaths were zero. Yes. So the lockdown cannot be answer uh, that. And secondly, the government has to increase the capacity by roping in the uh, hotels and the function halls which are lying in disuse, sir. So yes. instead of the lockdown, I will uh, strongly suggest the government to go for the alternate measures, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Enani, and uh, thank you, everyone. It was a very, very fruitful uh, discussion we had. Uh, and sir, if we. Yep. So one, one point. Sorry to disturb you. I yeah. think uh, one suggestion I have is as uh, Dr. Guru Arundi has uh, suggested. I think what we urgently require is a think tank in the government. I think the government should understand that this is serious business. This is public interest, and it has to be tackled with seriousness. Yes. So with this think tank, we require from the medical field, the professional association to identify some doctors. who can communicate right from the industry bodies i think they should identify some people who will communicate to the media mm. and then the media will get i think the correct or re- reasonably reliable information after that we will do our job going and talking and writing stories 
which are relevant to our reader or public. I think perhaps such a thing should be one. Thank you. I would like to thank everyone, Dr. Subodh, Dr. Ramakant Hirani, uh, Mr. Ramakant Hirani, Murli, Dr. Guru Reddy, uh, Som Shekhar, Shekhar Agarwal, and uh, Mr. Uh, Jasti. And I, I'm sure that uh, uh, I, I think we are going to put it on our website, uh, this uh, uh, discussion that we had. And let us hope that in future too, we'll be able to discuss uh, things as things unfold. And uh, good day to all of you. And thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir, everybody for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Murli. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Guruva. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you all of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all.